The future of Noel Pearson's school initiative in the troubled community of Arakoon in Cape York hangs in the balance. This school has now been closed for the rest of the term after some local teenagers twice tried to hijack the principal's car and are accused of terrorising several female teachers. The Queensland Government is reviewing the controversial education program run by the Cape York Aboriginal Australian Academy and a decision is due within about a fortnight, we understand. Since 2010, the government, the state government, has spent millions of dollars on the Cape York Academy delivering a US-based direct instruction curriculum at Arakoon. It's an extension of Noel Pearson's Cape York Welfare Program, which has attracted $260 million in federal and state government funding over the last about a decade. This latest trouble in Arakoon has prompted questions about what has been achieved with all this money and what is causing these tensions and uh, this chaos in Arakoon. Noel Pearson, welcome to RM Breakfast. Good morning, Fran. Is the Cape York Academy going to lose the Arakoon School? Is this still in negotiation or do you, be do you believe the government and the community has made up its mind? There's a review being conducted at the moment and it is the third review that we've had over the last six years. It's a routine review. In the previous two reviews, we were quite outstanding in our results, actually. Uh, so I'm very confident that um, we have the data and we have the evidence that these children are performing uh, very well, given their circumstances, and the teachers do a very heroic job in teaching them. Okay, I want to come to the, the direct instruction model in a moment, but I know you, you were in a meeting with uh, members of the community yesterday in Arakoon. Last week, after the um, the state government was there on Friday, the local councillors, some of them were very clear, saying that they wanted their high school, the state high school, reintroduced, and they wanted the direct instruction teaching model used at the um, at the campus, the Cape York Academy campus. They they wanted that um, r removed. What we, what? How did your discussions go? with the community yesterday what was the oh, message i had a very good meeting with the councillors and the commissioners from the family responsibilities commission what you have to understand fran is that the campaign against di started four years ago when the lnp government uh, came to power in 2012 the mayor and the local lnp member david kempton started talking about the evils of di four years ago and what has happened these past two weeks is really the culmination of a view held by the local mayor that direct instruction was a bad program. It was a campaign that was done in cahoots with the local member, as I say. Um, the genesis of the direct instruction program at Arakoon is actually, uh, I took the then mayor, the late mayor of Arakoon in 2009, and his deputy, and we went with a contingent from Cohen School as well. We went to New York, we went to Atlanta, we went to Portland, Oregon, and we looked at direct instruction schools with African-American kids, with Hispanic kids, with white kids in Portland and so on. We were very impressed with the program. And it was the mayor of Arakun, the so-called democratically elected leadership of that community that urged me to bring the program into their community. And I and the program enjoyed the full support of the council and the elders and the leaders um, from 2009 up until his death um, four years ago. OK, but that doesn't mean it's working now and it doesn't mean everyone supports it now. You mentioned the Independent Family Respons Responsibilities Commissioner, David Glasgow. He's overseen the Cape York Welfare Program. He He's quoted as saying the teaching method in the Cape York Academy has failed to prepare children for mainstream high schools. Well, this is a challenge across all communities, but can I say when we started in 2009, there were something like five kids out at high school. Five Arakun kids were out at high school. At the state high school? A at any high school. Oh, they were locally hanging around the community and not attending the local childminding kind of facility at the school. Um, there, were, there were heaps of kids. Yeah, but, but I, I, I don't a, want to get too genuine, distracted to the high school yet. I want to bring it back to the to the primary school, which is where the direct instruction... No, but I'm just saying, you're saying you've asked me whether kids have been prepared for high school mm. and I'm answering the question, mate. Okay, go on. And the, the, the answer is that um, there were five kids that were prepared in 2009. There are 57 kids today 
out at boarding schools. And there's 87 kids who are not at boarding school, presumably because they couldn't manage it or couldn't live away from home, who are from year six on, who are just floating around. Shouldn't they have access to a state host, local high Absolutely. school? Absolutely. But don't you think 57 uh, kids that are now out there succeeding is good progress? Yeah, I think that's good progress. Absolutely. But when, when we used to have five... John Bray was an executive principal at the school for six months last year. He quit saying the rigidly scripted curriculum has compounded student engagement in Arakoon, along with the complete distrust of the school by parents. He says both are contributing factors to events leading to the town school crisis. So you, you he's know, taught it, in your school. It, yeah, John, John developed a health problem. He, he developed cancer, he told us, and uh, he had to go. We supported him in his decision to go. He mentioned not once any view or reservation or criticism about the program that we had recruited him to help us administer. All of this view from John emerged after he joined Chris Sara's Stronger Smarter Institute. I just absolutely fell over backwards when I read his views about direct instruction because he never professed those views in all of the short six months that he was with us. As I said, most of that time he was consumed with health problems and I, I regretted that um, we gave him every support and I regretted that he left. I, I don't want this to be a discussion just about your model, but we, it is expensive. It's taken a lot of money and, and some are pointing out, um, I think the state government's invested $8 million, um, for uh, three schools using this model. Um, and some are pointing out that based on the NAPLAN results, other schools using not this model, schools like Bamaga, for instance, are performing better than Arakoon without have, anything like that kind of money. Have, have you studied the figures, Financial Frank? investment. I've had a look at the figures. I'm just trying to find because my most performing. Because absolutely that incorrect. You're swallowing a whole lot of spin from all of the anti-direct instruction crowd. And this past week has been a, a travesty of a conversation that was about youth delinquency and law and order in the community has been turned around into a story about the failings of what is a lighthouse school. I am prouder of nothing else than the progress of those children at Arakun who carry a heavy burden of mental impairment at the hands of alcohol, drugs, fetal alcohol syndrome, violence in the home, violence in the streets. These children are nevertheless succeeding against all of those odds and it is an absolute disgrace that people from the left, like Sarah, and people from the right, like the local member for Leichhardt, Warren Edge, they've got into an ecumenical kind of alliance against direct instruction and have uh, have really um, um, succeeded in... I concede that they've won the public debate um, in relation to the apparent flaws in direct instruction when there could be nothing further from the truth. You're listening to RM Breakfast. Our guest is Aboriginal leader Noel Pearson, leader of Cape York, up in Cape York, and uh, one of the driving forces of the um, Cape York Academy running the school in Arakuna. As you say, the problems that we've seen, the violence, the, you know, kids wielding machetes for heads, for heaven's sake, in Arakuna in recent weeks go well beyond the school, chronic alcoholism, sexual abuse, entrenched disadvantaged. Um, Cape York has also been involved with the welfare reform Form up there though too for some years now and uh, many tens of millions of dollars have been invested in this. What is wrong well, with for, Arakoon for, or what is wrong with the processes in place that nothing is being fixed? How, how well, do you describe it? Firstly, I want to take you up on your $260 million allegation. I didn't say 260 but others are well, no, saying No, you said it at the beginning. Oh, well, you're quoting, oh, yes. okay, quoting without reference to facts, mate. Um, it is nowhere near that number. Um, uh, th it's about is, 160 of the 260 spent in the Cape, isn't it? Over eight to ten years. The the um, and a lot of that is existing government investment through their programs and their people. The 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 headline figures actually involve um, the government's own expenditure through okay. its government departments and so on. All right. And this is one of our difficulties with reform: is that you know journalists like yourself don't actually get on top of the facts. Well, let, let's, let's deal with the facts, facts still, accurately. Let me go to the bigger problem of the yeah. the alcoholism, the sexual abuse, the okay. entrenched disadvantage in Arakoon. In, in the other three welfare reform communities, one of the schools of which is the leading school 
in remote Queensland, Cohen. It's the highest attendance. The, the achievement of the kids is, is, is getting up there with the best schools in Queensland. Um, that's another welfare reform community as well. In this whole debate about welfare reform, um, people fail to look at the fact that at Mossman Gorge, one of those welfare reform communities, we have a massive enterprise. All the people are in, employed in the gateway tourism at Mossman Gorge National Park. Um, there are good things happening at Hopevale. There's a, a horticulture investment in a banana farm mm. that's employing local people and so on. The thing that's missing at Arakun is jobs. You can't have welfare reform without jobs. And where we have jobs, we have welfare reform succeeding because welfare reform is about nudging people out of income support into paid work. But, of so, course, you've got to have the paid work available. And the challenge over the last eight years at Arakun has been our inability to generate any industry and job-creating opportunities for people that are on welfare. So where's that last week? I think you suggested a, a lack of community leadership was partly to blame for, for the situation there. But, um, last week also, the local community leaders said they, said they want more capacity to be involved, that the Cape York processes are locking them out. Well, I just pointed out to you, Fran, that um, the introduction of the school model was done with the mayor and the deputy mayor of Arakun, and they joined me in a trip to the United States. They urged me to implement the model in their school. So, you know, yes, there has been a change of regime. The, the former mayor died, and I suppose the question is, why don't we turn 180 degrees? Because the guy that's now in charge wants us to abandon the program that his predecessor endorsed and strongly supported. Um, should we now change 180 degrees in preference to his view, given that the mayor, on his own admission, has never visited the school in four years? Okay. No, he, has, he has not taken 200 steps to enter the school in his own community. No, Pearson, thank you for your time. It's obviously a, an ongoing conversation. The government's going to have this review for the next couple of weeks. I'd love to keep following it here on Breakfast. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Noel Pearson is the director of the Cape York Council You're listening, and the founder of the Cape York Institute. You're listening to RM Breakfast. It's six minutes to eight.